Hello everyone, what's up travelers? So today's video is actually a really difficult video for me because it's something that I've wanted to talk about on this platform for a few years. And I actually feel like it's something that I've struggled with having this conversation with you because well, I don't want to discourage anyone from traveling to Ghana. I think that's the first thing that I should state before this video even gets going. Um, I, this is not designed to discourage you from traveling to any part of the world, in particular Ghana, because we're going to talk about Ghana because Ghana is the example today. And so I have to say that because this is so challenging for me to discuss but you know these are conversations we have to have and with that being said before i get into it take a moment to hit the subscribe button if you have not subscribed and make sure you check the notification tab to see what videos we actually release and i like to mix up the content a little bit because it's a reflection of the conversations that are happening at this moment in time in and throughout black travelers network so with that being said, the question is, should Western Blacks punish Ghana? And I want to go a little bit into Ghana's discrimination against American and UK uh, Black folks who travel, uh, whether it's to relocate and live there or whether it's to travel and visit uh, for tourism purposes. And so what do I mean by punish? By punish, I mean hold back your resources by either not traveling to the country, which by the way, I do not recommend, but that is one form of punishment. Or if you travel, do not invest your money in the country by investing in any of their infrastructure projects. Um, that's another form of punishment. And drop some comments below because I'm going to get into this and I welcome any and all perspectives. Uh, I, again, this is not meant to discourage you from traveling to Ghana because to be quite honest, we have trips that have gone to Ghana. Uh, and for those who are interested in visiting the country, we can still uh, be a, a conduit for you to visit the country and have a great, amazing time. So I just want to uh, be clear because I hate it when people tell you, oh, that country is trash or that country is, is lame or that country, you don't visit that country. No, I feel it's important for people to go have their own experience, formulate your own opinion. And so I want to get into a series of reasons why we have to ask the question, should we punish Ghana? The first reason, as we all know, Ghana participated in the transatlantic slave trade. On August 1st of 2019, the country formally apologized to African Americans for its role in the transatlantic slave trade. The president of Ghana, Nana Akufo Adu, made the formal public apology during the commemoration of the 400 year anniversary of the arrival of the first enslaved African people in Jamestown, Virginia, here in the United States. The apology was aimed to acknowledge the injustices of the past and to really strengthen the ties between Ghana and the African diaspora worldwide. So he felt compelled to uh, do the formal apology. Fast forward to 2023 and we get another apology from the country of Uganda, which is in East Africa. Now Uganda is apologizing on behalf of the African continent and they really didn't have much to do with the transatlantic slave trade. We come in humidity and brokenness to repent for the sins of the leaders in Africa and in particular, the scene of sending our own brothers and sisters into slavery. This great scene brought untold pain and misery to millions of people of African descent and judgment to the African people 
who remained on the continent. The grave scene of slavery scattered our people all over the face of the earth where they have suffered great deprivations and loss. If it were not for the part that our African kings and chiefs played in the slave trade, this evil trade could not have survived. Therefore, on behalf of all the African leaders, past and present, all of them, I acknowledge the part that we played in this tragedy, and today we ask for forgiveness. However, Uganda does want to increase their tourism dollars. So we get an apology that we didn't even need from Uganda. So it makes you wonder, is the apology from Ghana genuine or is it designed to bring in more tourism dollars? And let's not ignore the fact that the Cape Coast slave dungeon, as well as the Elmina slave dungeon are two attractions that people can visit when you go on your first trip to Ghana. It's part of the historical uh, aspect of the country that they actually do highlight. And those dungeons still are making money for the country of Ghana to this day. Uh, there are lots of school children that's taken there uh, as a way of educating them about the history of the country. Uh, and most people who tour Ghana for the first time will visit Cape Coast and Elmina slave dungeons. And so they are still actively making money off of their participation in the transatlantic slave trade. And that's something we have to be honest about. And again, it raises the question, was the apology genuine? Should we punish Ghana? Also, Americans who have traveled to Ghana experience on the ground living in Ghana does not reflect Ghana's apologetic spirit because many Americans who live there or who have visited there have had to pay higher costs than not only the Ghanaian citizens, but have had to pay higher costs than other West African citizens who travel to visit Ghana. So there's clearly a difference in what we have to pay as Americans or folks from the UK versus what those uh, of African citizenship who are from ECOWAS countries. And ECOWAS stands for Economic Community of West African States. And the members countries of this community are the countries that you see right now on your screen. It's about 17 West African countries who are a part of the ECOWAS community. Many times folks from these communities are not expected to pay the same level of prices that other uh, Western folks are expected to pay. The reason why this is problematic is because None of the folks from those particular countries can come over to the United States. And because they are from those countries, be charged a completely different set of fees than us as Americans. They cannot go into the stores and be assessed a different price because of where they are from. That is called discrimination. That is called a lawsuit. Why is it that if we go to a place like Ghana, we want to visit and engage in tourism, some folks engage in business, and we're hit with higher costs just because we're American? That doesn't really seem fair. I can't speak for the UK, but I know when they come to America, there are measures in place to hold those who participate in that level of discrimination accountable for those actions. We cannot assess two different price points for people based on their culture, their background, or their origin. That's by definition discrimination. And I've spoken to different Americans who own and run businesses 
out of Ghana who've reported being charged and assessed higher fees uh, for their permits, having to maintain their businesses. Um, those costs that they have to pay is more elevated and more expensive than the citizens in Ghana who own and run businesses. And I can say for me, the time I experienced the most obvious overcharging in the country was during the pandemic. And this time period, traveling to Ghana during the pandemic is actually the one thing that I must admit really did turn me off of, about the country. And at that time, Ghana was blatantly overcharging just by landing in the airport and visiting. During that time, if you remember, when you traveled to Ghana and you landed in the airport, you had to prove that you were free of the 19. And I say that because at the end of the day, you could not even board your flight from your home country without having to take a test to prove that you were in good health and you were not infected with the 19. So you already had to pay when you were in your home country. Then you get on the flight and you land and they're going to force you to take another test in the country to prove that the test you took hours before that you're still in the same good health, okay? And not only did you have to pay, but it was a dramatic difference between what a Ghanaian citizen had to pay versus what a, an American or someone from the UK, non ECOWAS, non Ghanaian citizen had to pay. And if you look at the screen, you'll see this was from the embassy's website that highlights the difference in price for those people who were from ECOWAS or from Ghana when you landed in the airport, you had to take a $50 PCR test and test negative in order to be allowed entry into the country. However, if you were an American citizen and you wanted to enter in the country, the same PCR test that they charge ECOWAS and Ghanaian citizens $50 for, oh no, you had to pay $150 for the same exact test. That, ladies and gentlemen, is blatant discrimination. We're not talking about tests that were different. We're not talking about anything different. It's just based on your culture, your background, and where you come from. You are now assessed a higher fee. That's discrimination. And so that whole experience really turned me off about the country because I'm like, you know, if they're doing that very publicly during this time of the pandemic, how does that shape out and play out on the ground? And you know, when you go to vendors and you're shopping at the markets, they're gonna charge you more than what they would charge someone who's clearly from the area. The vendors are going to try to get you for extra money as well. And so it's just this system that's a blatant system of unfairness. And I want to close out by saying this, you know, there are a number of black Americans, blacks from the UK, um, blacks from Australia, like different parts of what's considered to be the Western world who have gone over to Ghana and who bought land, who purchased property, uh, various types of real estates. One brother out of Chicago, I forget his name, uh, was very instrumental in building, like helping to build a hundred housing units right there in Ghana. And you think about that and you also layer on the fact that the year of return brought out, according to the Ghana Tourism Authority, the year of return brought out more than 1.3 million international visitors. Most of those were Black Americans. And that whole year of return effort put 1.9 billion, billion with a B, dollars into the Ghanaian economy. So it's not like 
the diaspora as a whole has not contributed financially to the country. And I just think it's really wrong and uh, unfair that every time you go, there's another fee that's assessed to you if you're a member of the African diaspora as a whole, in particular, those of us from the UK and America, you're, you're just being overcharged. And to me, that is a form of discrimination. And so I'd love for you guys to comment on this. And again, I open it up with the question, should we punish Ghana? Drop your comments below. Let us know what you think. Uh, be respectful to each other. I, you know, I have no problem with people expressing their opinions uh, on uh, this platform and in the comment section, but this is a very real conversation we need to have and a real question because I feel like Ghana needs to get this uh, under control. Do not apologize to the African diaspora for your participation in the transatlantic slave tr trade if it's not genuine and the behavior you show and display on the ground goes completely against that apology and there's nothing but fee after fee, overcharge after overcharge that we're being assessed and then you constantly invite us to come back. You constantly invite us to come back and it just leads to feeling like we're just one big dollar sign. So drop your comments below, ladies and gentlemen. Let us know what you think and until next time.